Good afternoon. We are L1B's Group 2, and our project topic is about hot and cold weather concreting. And for today's presentation, we will talk about the effects of extreme temperature on concrete, common mitigation practices in the industry, and some of the recent research on concrete mix for hot and cold weather concrete. First, we'll talk about some of the effects of extreme temperature on concrete. This includes strength development, plastic shrinkage cracking, thermal cracking, and scaling. Hydration is a chemical reaction in which compounds in cement form chemical bonds with water. The rate of hydration is directly proportional to the temperature, so the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of hydration will be. This attributes to the high early strength of concrete cured at higher temperature. However, its decreased later strength could be due to the non-uniform distribution of hydration products leaving weak zones in the structure. Next is plastic shrinkage cracking. This occurs when the concrete is experiencing rapid loss of moisture caused by ambient temperature, relative humidity, wind velocity, and the temperature of the concrete. When evaporation rate exceeds the rate of water produced by the bleeding process, the water disappears and the top surface of the concrete begins to shrink. Tensile stresses develop in the weak, stiffening plastic concrete, resulting in shallow cracks of varying depth. Heat of hydration increases the internal temperature of concrete. It creates a thermal gap between the inside and outside of the structure. This thermal gap causes tensile stress as a result of the restrained condition of the inside and outside of the structure. Thermal cracks occur when the tensile stress reaches the tensile strength of the concrete, as shown in the figure. Lastly, we'll talk about scaling. Scaling is a local flaking or peeling off a finished surface of hardened concrete as a result of exposure to freezing and thawing. If bleed water is present on the surface, this gives the structure a low strength surface layer due to high water cement ratio. This layer will be susceptible to scaling in freezing conditions. Insufficient curing could also cause scaling since it will also result in a weak surface. The pouring of concrete in cold temperatures greatly increases the setting time which can lead to decreased strength in the concrete. If the water in the concrete mix completely freezes, the hydration of cement may stop completely. Even if there is only partial freezing and thawing, the concrete will be negatively affected. One of the most common methods currently used in the field is using hot water to create the mixture. This counteracts the effects of the external environment to increase the rate of hydration. One solution to pouring concrete in cold weather is using high early strength concrete. This mixture contains higher amounts of tricalcium silicate and tricalcium aluminate, which leads to a faster setting time. The rate of hydration will keep the temperature of the mix high enough to gain rapid strength development before there is any effect from temperature. Admixtures may be added to the concrete mixture to further enhance its cold weather performance. Heated framework is another method that can be used to avoid freezing and cold weather related problems when pouring concrete. When building concrete structures, it is often necessary to pour the concrete in different stages. Fresh concrete will not bond to frozen concrete, so heated framework can bring concrete that has already set up to temperature. An advantage to heated framework is that it can be used with any type of concrete mixture. Pouring concrete in hot weather conditions leads to many problems including rapid rates of hydration, which can lead to problems such as cracking in larger structures. In hot weather, the rapid evaporation of the water in the concrete mix may not allow full hydration to occur, which leads to a decreased strength development. The image on the screen shows ice being ground up and added to the mixture instead of warm water, which lowers the temperature of the mix. This is a common method that is currently being used in the field. Low and moderate heat of hydration cements are readily available and commonly used when pouring concrete in hot weather. The reduced tricalcium silicate and tricalcium aluminate content leads to a much slower rate of strength development. Moderate heat of hydration cement is also resistant to chemical attacks such as hydrosulfate. 
In addition, various admixtures are often added to the mix to decrease the hydration temperature. Colossa fly ash can replace part of the Portland cement or fine aggregate in a mixture without any significant loss of strength and is very effective in hot weather concreting. The fly ash has a smaller slump loss and reduced bleeding compared to general use Portland cement mix. There is also a reduction in the rate of heat produced, which causes less water evaporation and leads to a longer setting period. Curing blankets are commonly used where there are very hot outside temperatures. They maintain a cool surface by providing a barrier from direct sunlight. Curing blankets are water resistant and decrease evaporation by keeping the concrete at a higher humidity level. The resulting increased hydration will lead to a greater strength development in the concrete. All right, now we're gonna talk about advanced hot and cold weather control methods and some of the challenges with them. Um, most of these aren't used in industry because they are not approved by CSA. Um, CSA has to rigorously test everything to make sure that it doesn't have any detrimental side effects. So most of these are still in the, the development stage. Most of the new methods in development for cold weather focus on allowing the concrete to gain strength even at negative temperatures and to delay the reaction of accelerant admixtures, giving greater workability. Antifreeze admixtures are one of the new methods in development. Uh, they prevent the water in the mix from freezing, allowing the concrete to gain strength even at negative temperatures. And this one of major advantage to this is it doesn't have the negative side effect of workability like admixtures do. Another compound used for cold weather concreting is urea. Um, typically, urea is used in the fertilizer industry but it's been shown to have some good effects with working with cold weather concrete. Um, it, similar to antifreeze, it, do, it allows the concrete to gain strength at negative temperatures. Uh, it's been shown that up to 80% of a typical control mix strength can be obtained at minus five degrees, but it's been shown to be less effective below this temperature. And urea increases the workability while preventing freezing. Tabletting is another method in development. Accelerator admixtures can be tabletized to delay their effect. The admixture is coated in a water-soluble coating that takes about 45 minutes to dissolve. This allows for greater workability during the initial stages of the pour. Now on to advanced hot weather control methods. Most of the new methods in development for hot weather mostly focus on controlling plastic shrinkage cracks. Using a curing compound other than water has shown to be an effective way of reducing shrinkage cracks. Bitumen based compounds have been shown to be the most effective, but there is a trade off in compressive strength gain. Um, so the best solution is to water-based cure for the first two days to gain that initial strength, followed by a bitumen products for the best results. Superabsorbent polymers, SAPs, are a substance that can absorb multiple times their weight in water. Uh, they've been shown to help prevent plastic shrinkage by providing internal water reservoirs to be used as a concrete concrete cures. Uh, they work by reducing the buildup of capillary pressure and so there isn't this tensile strength on the surface of the concrete causing cracks. Strength gain isn't effective. All right that concludes our presentation. Thank you for watching.